Infidelity should not override the view of the people. So what is the will of the people in a race that's this close? Is it the combination of the popular vote? And what about the caucuses and the primaries? And right. the open caucuses and the open primaries? And let's go to Michigan, which is one part of the question. When there was an active program amongst Democrats in Michigan to get them to vote in the Republican primary in order to give Mitt Romney a boost because he was the only person who was kicking the hell out of all the Republicans in the primary. And they were successful and moved Democrats into that primary. I don't know. Does that reflect the will of the people or doesn't it? And they're apparently, I believe, in order to ascertain that thing, we're going to need someone that's a little bit wiser than me. Uh, unfortunately, uh, we're left with people who are probably a little bit wiser than me, but mostly of the same ilk, that are good Democrats who are working hard, who landed in a superdelegate position by virtue of their work, either for the party or for their constituents as a congressman, a senator, a governor. And their, their charge is, going forward, to use their best judgment when they get to Denver. Um, and there's a wide range of strategies that superdelegates have used in this. I believe that I use the smartest strategy of all. I declared my support for Senator Obama early, and I'm not the focus of a lot of phone calls and persuasion. Hillary hasn't called, Bill hasn't called, Chelsea hasn't called, <laughs> Michelle hasn't called. No, but it's, I'm like the Maytag repairman of, uh, of superdelegates, which I'm very grateful for, obviously. Um, and, uh, so the question then moves to what about Michigan and Florida? As the chair of the party, I have to tell you, Michigan and Florida broke the rules. So we can't get past that point. There was a significant conversation because the people, whoever they were, in Michigan and Florida, decided that they were smarter than the process. And it wasn't, it wasn't honestly a situation that, listen, the process wasn't fair. Listen, it, of course it's not fair. Well, New Hampshire and Iowa have had a, a, a long-standing lock on these early vo state votes. And of course, because we're politicians, we always rerun the last election. We can never focus on the reality in front of us today. All we always do is look at the last election and pretend it's still the same, and then we rerun those. So we knew this time that what was essential was to be early in the process in order to be relevant to the decision of who our nominee was. If you were stupid enough to be Pennsylvania and hang out till the end, no one would care how your votes went. And states all over the country were battling with this thing about we need to be relevant. So they, they tried to take a look at the system, which every state agreed to over a year ago, that, they, that we would expand the pie from just Iowa and, and New Hampshire. And last time we added South Carolina in order to get a state that actually had some African American and minority voters participating early. And then this time there was a move to add, um, to add Nevada for three reasons. Number one, it was in the Southwest. Number two, it had a significant Latino population, but also not well discuss discussed, it has a significant Asian American population. So they went into an, an, an early phase as well, because we all knew that being early meant being relevant, and being late meant being irrelevant, right? We knew that, because we rerun the last election. And people all over the, the country were trying to figure out how do we become more relevant. We had the debate in Massachusetts. I don't know if you talked about it in your thing, but in many meetings I was going to time, should we move up? Some people just said we should move back because you get extra delegates to vote. Um, so in Massachusetts, we made a, a decision. We, and uh, Secretary Galvin's a uh, very wise uh, counsel, I think. There was at that time, a, the feeling was that we should move up to be relevant. And we should also move up, according to the Secretary's judgment, which I think was right, to stay proximate to New Hampshire. Because all of the, the media boom and all of the fact that people were heading to New Hampshire would give Massachusetts an, an opportunity to take some of that overflow energy and it would improve our position as far as voter registration and active participation in primary. And Secretary Galvin was absolutely right. Our voter registration went through the roof. Our participation was record-breaking. We got all the benefits of that. But what, we, what his decision was, was not to follow the lead of Michigan and Florida and break the rules, but to actually comply with the rules. Because the rules allowed anyone, any state, to move up until February 5th. At any time up to February 5th, you could change your date without any problem. And we did that. We got all the benefits and none of the questions about the, the validity of our delegates. So um, they broke the rules uh, in, in very poor strategic decision, it turned out. So I don't think you, we can have a solution that doesn't have some consequence. Around it. Equally true, I think that 
we can't win this election in November without Michigan 10 Florida votes. So it's important for us to be conscious of that as we try to work a solution that, that will, and this is my position, that will seek delegations from Florida and Michigan. 